My name is Rami Younes. I'm a journalist, a filmmaker, and I was born and raised here in Lid. What's the story? The story of Lid is the story of the city that once connected Palestine to the world, and now it's a, like a has-been diva. It used to be a very important place for Palestinians, and now it's kind of forgotten. تعرفوا أكم حضارة صرت شايفة هون؟ أكم حضارة عاشت وماتت؟ تعرفوا كم الألم والحب والعنف اللي شفته هون؟ صعب أوصف لكم شو الناس كانت مستعدة تعمل ببعضها وكله بس عشان بدهم يعني Before 1948, Lid used to be a very important city. It used to be somewhat of an economic hub. Some Palestinian researchers imagine Lid, if it weren't for the occupation, as our Tel Aviv. Not only it had Palestine's international airport, also due to its geographical location, as it is located in the center of historical Palestine, it used to have a very important train station. If you want to really understand what ethnic cleansing means, then you have to learn about what happened in Lid. Massacres happened in here. The city fought, the city resisted occupation, and as a form of punishment, it was cleansed from its uh, people. Uh, the city was erased. The old city in Lid used to be beautiful. If you look at aerial footage, you would see that where we stand right now, there used to be a lot of houses that belong to people, to actual people, actual families. But now, if you walk around in Lid, you see these empty lots. What happened in here is an example of how important it was for the Zionist establishment, the newly found Israel, to put a halt to the urbanization process that the Palestinian society was just in the midst of. Back in 1948, the city was under siege. Um, the people of Lid resisted uh, the Palmach uh, uh, occupation forces, the people who came to occupy the city. And when the Palmach soldiers were able to enter Lid, um, they committed a massacre in a mosque that's called Dahmash Mosque. According to the Zionist story, there was a grenade that was thrown at them from the mosque. So they had to kill the people that threw the grenade on them, on the Palmach soldiers. Uh, so according to that story, only men who are fighters were there. But that's not true. We know for a fact, because also I'm doing a film about this, I'm making a film about this, so I know that there were women and children, refugees from Salami, from Jaffa, from Anshi, from other places that were occupied before Lid, before Lid was occupied. So these people were taking refuge, families were taking refuge in a mosque, but the Israelis decided to kill everyone in that mosque. And that was one of the massacres, the horrifying massacres of the occupation, of the Nakba, of the catastrophe of the Palestinian people. I'm making a film about Lid because I want to pay tribute to my hometown, to the place I was you know, born and raised in, which we, we all know is not an easy place. Because it's a forgotten story, because the victims of 1948 deserve recognition, and also because we wanted to try and tell the story of the Nakba from a different perspective. In our film, not only we show and we reveal the true nature of what happened in 1948. Also, it was important for us to create an alternate reality in which the same characters that we see in real life, they also have a life in this alternate reality. But in this alternate reality, they are not refugees. They are not second-class citizens here in Lid. They are Palestinians and they live in Lid that is still part of Palestine. We created an alternate reality in which the occupation never happened because I want people to believe that they are strong, that they are powerful. They can imagine a different reality, not the reality that we know. <laughs>